Hi guys, so today's video is going to be a funny one star reviews for Scythe by Neil Schusterman. If you've not seen this series on my channel, it's where I take a popular book that is generally really well loved and I find the people that don't love it and I read their negative reviews to all of you. It's essentially mean tweets, but for a book. If you've not read the book, it's no big deal. I'll give a brief synopsis so that you can still kind of understand the context of the reviews and I promise I won't read any review that has any spoilers. I have a whole playlist of books that I have done this for, but if you have any suggestions for books that you would like me to do this for in the future, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. That said, I have an in-depth trilogy review for this series that is primarily non-spoiler, but to just give a brief synopsis, basically this story takes place in our world, but the far future where the cloud has gained sentience that is now known as the Thunderhead, it pretty much runs everything and we have conquered death, disease of all sorts are no longer around, there's essentially no crime, the only threat to humanity is overpopulation. So we have established a group of individuals known as scythes who are responsible for going around and killing or gleaning people to prevent overpopulation. The story takes off when an established scythe takes in two young individuals that are going to apprentice from him and learn to become scythes themselves. That's the little brief synopsis for it. Now jumping into the negative reviews and we're gonna start with, um, this was not good. This reads like somebody just starting out who is hopping on the dystopia bandwagon, who has no real idea about world building or character development or plotting. And guys, that is not Schusterman. This is like when that Oscar winning actor is in a buddy cop movie that involves trying to handcuff a suspect in a whipped cream factory after one of the machines gets stuck in the squirt everywhere position. You know, when they just want to get out of a contract, so they'll do anything. This next one says, on principle, I'm not going to give a book with as much blatant fat phobia as this book has anything higher than one star. I'd give it zero if I could. Yes, yes, it was an interesting story and the pacing was great and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, if your writing is fat phobic, I'm not going to encourage others to read it, which is exactly what giving it a high rating is doing. This book is from 2016. There's no excuse. And there's no it'd be X rating, but a docked one point or half point cause fat phobia. No, that's an automatic fail. Go directly to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200. Not just a footnote at the bottom of a review and a small point deduction. Sometimes when I do these, I read the entirety of the review. Sometimes I just read a snippet. And this one, this is all they wrote. It says, I didn't like this book at all. It was that bad. I never even picked it up at school today. This next one also, the entirety of the review says, eh, it was good at first, but it fizzled out shortly thereafter. I hate violence, so this is really not the book for me. Kind of a similar situation for this person. It says, I really wanted to like this one, but I found it morbid. I hate the idea that certain people, scythes, go around and kill people. Part of it makes sense in a world where people can't die, but that actual people have to go around murdering people is horrible. Then that they pick kids to apprentice. That is so much worse. I made it 100 pages in and I just can't finish. I hate seeing how these kids will be trained as murders, how they are ostracized by society, and I really don't want to see them make their first kill. In the end, this one just isn't for me. This person says, I hate it. If you like it and find meaning in it, good for you. I can't get past how hard it's friggin' trying. This next one says, it would take an author of far greater skill than Mr. Schusterman to redeem this novel. Its mediocre and relatively unoriginal concept is made even worse by the talentless literary style. The text abounds with ill-crafted sentences and unreasonably fictitious dialogue. In my view, it stands only to recapitulate everything I loathe about the young adult genre. This next one says, <clears throat> The Scythe is book about a perfect world where no one dies unless they die to the Scythe's hands. This book is about how two young teens are taken from their homes because of something heroic that they did and the master scythe sees them do it and takes the to become his apprentice. They, they have to compete for the spot because there can only be one person to win and the other one gets gleaned. In this book, the author does a good job of places the setting in the future and also making it relatable at the same time. In this book, the author also does a good job of making the relationship between the two apprentices and their master very strong and good. Boys 
And girls will both like this book or dislike it. In all, I didn't like this book and would give it a one star because it was too long and boring in a lot of parts and parts of the book didn't need to go on, but they did. So sometimes I find these on Goodreads, sometimes I find them on Amazon, and when you look at Amazon negative reviews, there's always a little tagline at the top. This one's tagline is just a big bowl of warm oatmeal. They go on from that to say, so this is what young adult fiction has come to, a eh? Legitimizing murder, as though Neil Shusterman aspires to provide required reading for the next wave of young Nazis. This other Amazon review says, adult audience, not for kids and teens. They go on to say, as an author, educator, school librarian, and volunteer with foster teens, I found this dystopian book morally reprehensible since it justifies various techniques of cold-blooded murder in a blasé manner. Going back to Goodreads reviews, this one says, ugh, just downloaded this on Audible and I want my money back. A few words to describe this book. Boring, morose, and more boring. I'd been avoiding picking this one up for a while, mostly because a book about kids learning how to kill random people for the greater good of humanity sounded awful. And it was awful. People who are giving this book five stars, like, I don't know you, but I feel sorry for you. You need more joy in your life. This is such a joyless book. I could physically feel it leeching the happiness from my body. I was thinking about giving it two stars, but then my cursor hovered over the two stars icon for a couple of seconds, and Goodreads, thankfully, reminded me that two stars means it was okay. And it was not okay. Nothing about this book was okay. I honestly feel kind of depressed, like I need to watch an episode of Friends to recover. And not depressed in the life is so short and beautiful kind of way, but in the life is pointless and why am I even alive kind of way. I'm a little bit ticked about it actually, and I didn't even finish the whole book. Ugh. Life is simply too short and too hard to waste a second of it on something this draining. This next one, their entire review says, ugh, but not ah, you know? I don't know, I didn't feel it. No, I don't, I don't know what that means. This next one says, this is a book that could only have been written by a straight, white, cis, American man. This last one is very long, but I find it amusing, so I'm gonna read the entire thing. It says, Scythe is the first book in the Ark of the Scythe duology, trilogy, I don't know. In Scythe, there are two different points of view. The first coming from Citra, and the second coming from Rowan. I didn't know what to expect in Scythe since it's such a different kind of novel, where most of the world's problems are solved. Almost like a utopia kind of book. Yet the premise of Scythe contradicts my utopian predictions. It took me so long to read this book. I'm not even kidding. I ended up giving Scythe back to the library five days after it was due because I was just so pissed off at this novel and wanted to exact my revenge on Scythe by finishing the book. Some revenge artist I am, huh? Ha ha, ha ha. What I thought was interesting about Scythe was that it seems like the world's problems have all come to an end. World hunger? Fixed. Plagues and diseases? Gone. Who needs them? I mean, these people don't even catch colds. There's no wars and there's no world misery. For that matter, it seems like everyone is content. When I heard and read about this book, my thoughts were, how interesting. I think I'll give that one a try and requested Scythe from the library. Let me just say that I am extremely glad that I borrowed Scythe from the library. If I hadn't, well, then I probably wouldn't have read this book. Let's say that I bought this book though, I'd probably have returned it about 150 pages in. Unnamed 14 at first, I thought that Citra's view was the only view we'd read from, but then I remembered that there was also Rowan and that we'd get the chance to meet. I actually really enjoyed reading from Citra's point of view. Not only is her name pretty, but she's competitive and has an attitude to match. Citra is a little like me in the competitive way. If Scythe was read from only Citra's point of view, I think that I would have enjoyed this book way more than I actually did. While Rowan was an interesting character, I found that I didn't enjoy reading from his point of view on things. Rowan was dull and incredibly lenient in his own way. That made me not like Rowan at all. I honestly don't care for Rowan's character. With both Rowan's and Citra's points of view on things, the story moves incredibly slowly, yet the story also moves incredibly quickly. It wasn't until the very last half of the book that the action and story started to pick up. For me, the story moves agonizingly slowly during the beginning and middle parts of Scythe, 
And when it was slow, I hate to say it, but the story was becoming a little dull. I can't even begin to count how many times I almost gave up on the book. Seriously, I just wanted to return Scythe to the library and forget that Scythe was even a book. However, Scythe has a nice premise and I wanted to find out what would happen at the end of the book. So without just flipping to the end of the novel to find out what happens, I read the book. In doing so, I found that the story does get interesting towards the end, which was really the only thing that, in my opinion, made this book interesting again. There are a few twists in the plot that seem desperate, but also fit the book and where I hope the story is going pretty well. What I liked about this book was that the author has depicted that death in this book anyway has the same standing as that of a tax worker, which is honestly hilarious. And since no one can naturally die anymore, this world is bound to have quite a few sites around to pick up our own slack. After all of this, I have got to say that I'm glad I finished reading Scythe. This book wasn't the story I thought it'd be, but even then, I didn't know what Scythe would entail. Anyway, that is it for some funny one-star reviews for Scythe. Let me know which one was your favorite. I really enjoyed that last one quite a bit. If you want to know more about this trilogy and maybe see it from not just a one-star review lens, I will link my trilogy review for it. And like I said before, if you have any suggestions for some other books that you'd like me to do some funny one-star reviews for, let me know. I'll link the playlist that I currently have in the description bar as well. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.